I think for me, fulfillment comes when I stay in the moment. It's the only way to be fulfilled because if you're jumping ahead, you're always wishing something's going to happen. And if you're living in the past, you're always living there, not here. So there's that book titled Be Here, Be Now. And I think for me, that's it. And my here and now is basically teaching. Because if I don't teach, I feel like I get self-absorbed. And I turn to the future or to the past. But if I'm teaching, the only way I can stay as a good teacher is to stay present. So I think it's a gift for anyone to become a teacher. It helps you to stay present, and staying present brings you in alignment with fulfillment, always. Mm -hmm. Well, the fulfillment to me with Kundalini Yoga is basically sadhana. To be able to dump the subconscious unconscious every morning and give it back to Creator, to clear you for the rest of the day, is the biggest thing I do every day. Without that, I wouldn't want to go out my front door. It's not so good because I'm not clear. And that's where this first step of fulfillment is empty the past. What was the past? It was last night. It was the day before. It was lifetimes before. It was all the way back to the beginning of your soul travel. And to empty it out allows you the fulfillment of being in the presence. So Kundalini Yoga as part of the sadhana is the express train for me to clear it out. Otherwise, it can take years and years and years. And that's another reason why I like to teach it. For me, it is. But it also allows me to love, it allows me to love all other faiths and all other paths. Because Kundalini Yoga is not a religion. It's just science of breath and angles. So if I can get my angle right and my breath right, then anybody else's journey or karma or samskars it's fine. They don't have to do what I do. Um, and I can love what they're doing and love their journey also. In other words, it, 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 it lifts judgment from you when you're in tune with your breath and you're doing your sadhana. It's just a tool for anybody from any walk of life to become more of what they they're meant to be. The message basically is do sadhana. That was the last words of Yogi Bhajan was do sadhana. Secondly, if you love the science, if you found the science to work for you and change your life, then how to become even greater even more fulfilled, more happy, is to then teach it to others. And that's been my message for about 40 years now. And I watch it work and all the teaching trainers that we have throughout the world. I watch them lost or bewildered or wanting to change but not knowing how their lives. They take teacher's training and it unfolds right before them over and over and over. It's a science. And a science has a promise of based on truth. It's not hope. It's yes. Eleven and eleven eleven, according to astrology and numerology, is a time when the planet makes a shift in its angles. And it's in relationship to the whole galactic force. And many, many have prophesied this time. It's the end of the old, the beginning of the new. More than we've experienced, certainly in our lifetime, and actually for the last 2,000 years. And so I feel it's such a privilege to come back at this time and to perhaps help as best as I can people to make this shift, this shift in consciousness 
that will, in fact, bring a peace to this earth. And I believe it. I believe it from the bottom of my heart that this is the destiny of planet Earth. And thereby, I can dedicate my life to this work knowing that it is really for the good of all. It's like if you plant a seed in the ground, just when it pops up, it doesn't mean that that's all it did. It had to push its way through and germinate through, through the earth and through the earth to come up. So all the preparation for the Aquarian Age is right now. We've been preparing greatly since the millennium. What's happening to people now? Some people are not doing very well. They're suffering a great deal now. Values are changing. People are re-examining their lives from the economical to the social, religious, political world. Everything is turning upside down. Everything is exposed now. We can know what's happening in Egypt and China right when it's happening, which never happened before. So the world is becoming smaller in that sense and thereby giving us the ability to really help each other. And um, it can also go the opposite. So through our prayers, are we able to, and through this practice, are we perhaps able to go across this world ocean into this peace that really is meant to be? Thank you.